Okay, so today I'm gonna show you how to stretch the hamstring uh, on a partner, okay? Um, and so there are uh, three different versions or varieties or three different methods, or I will say transitions uh, on how to stretch a hamstring. The first, well, actually we'll say three different types of people. Okay, so the first person uh, type of person is someone who uh, has very little flexibility. Uh, the second person is somebody who has moderate flexibility. And the third type of person is somebody who has um, a lot of flexibility. And then we'll touch about uh, on the fourth person that has extreme flexibility. That's even more than the third person that has quite a bit of flexibility. Um, so we'll get started. So um, we understand that the hamstring uh, is originates on the ischial tuberosity and it inserts uh, onto the fibula and also onto the tibia. Um, and so what we'll find is that this, these, this is, so this is the biceps femoris and then these are the semi-tendinosis and semi-membranosis. We're considering this to be both muscles, okay? Um, and so when, as we talked about before, that when we self-stretch, uh, there's a lot of different ways that we can self-stretch, uh, but to stretch the hamstrings, basically we have to either flex the hip um, or flex the hip and extend the knee. Okay, so what we're going to do to start is I'm going to show you how to stretch the hamstring with somebody who is not very flexible, okay? And so what we would do with that individual is um, if I am a trainer or a doctor or whatever that might be, and we want to stretch our client, the first thing we would do is take our hand, put it under their heel. Uh, and then we would lift their, uh, put our other hand underneath the bottom of their, the back of their knee, and we would lift their leg, okay? And so we would begin to lift their leg and determine whether they're flexible or not. So we can say, okay, if this is my partner, I would say, okay, let me know when to stop raising your leg. At that point, they might say stop. So uh, because of uncomfortable, uh, uncomfortable feeling based on their hamstring and how it feels. So at that point, I might determine that this individual is not very flexible. So this stretch might be effective for them for a little bit, but what I would most likely want to do is I would actually bend their knee. Okay, and put them in this type of position to stretch their hamstring. So I can, I can do this stretch and lift their leg, but remember their leg's gonna be pretty heavy. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're an uh, individual that is 250, 300 pounds, or whether you're an individual that's 150, or whether you're an individual that's 110 pounds. Me using one hand to keep the leg in this position is gonna become tiring for me, okay? And my arm eventually, is going to fatigue and start to burn and, and give me all the feelings I get from uh, muscle fatigue. Um, so it's not a very good or healthy um, biomechanical position or ergonomically correct position for me to hold the leg. Not only that is I could stretch the hamstring in a, in a more appropriate way that's effective for them and it's also safe for me. So I'm going to flex the hip and keep the knee flexed. And at this particular position, I can hold on to their heel and I can hold up with one hand and hold on to their knee with the other. Okay, and so I could, uh, most often we have table, a table, training table, so forth that we can utilize for uh, a sitting on. And so what I would do is I would basically have one foot on the ground, Okay, one foot on the ground and another foot off the ground. Uh, and I'm kind of half sitting on the table 
and half sitting off. And so, and so here I would have one hand here, right, again, or I can use this hand. Most of the time I use one hand, my, I'll use my left hand, uh, and then my right hand on, this is his, this would be the right leg, right? My left hand on the heel, right hand on the leg. So I could base, and then I also could, could hold it there. This might get a little bit tiring for my hand. So I could put uh, my hand underneath the heel, sorry, my hand underneath the heel, and, and then I could put the foot up against my shoulder or up my upper chest. Okay, and then I would just hold, okay, I would hold for 30 seconds. And then at that point, I hold for 30 seconds. Okay, I hold for 30 seconds. And then I would then at that point ask them uh, if they, um, I would basically say to them, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm doing three 30 second passes, three 30 second passes. So my first 30 seconds is, so once I, let me just step back. Once I come up, I would say, okay, let me know when to stop pushing up. They, they would say, basically stop here. That's where they would feel uncomfortable. At that point, I would, my next 30 second pass would be more hip flexion, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to ask them, okay, I'm going to push up on your leg a little bit more. Let me know when to stop. Okay. I push, stop. I hold for 30 seconds. 30 seconds goes by. I ask them again. Okay. I'm going to push up a little bit more. Let me know when to stop, stop. Then I hold another 30 seconds. So that's for three 30 second passes. This might be enough stretch for them because they're not flexible that just hip flexion, which remember the quadricep does that. The quadricep does hip flexion. Also there are some other muscles, but the quadricep and the, and, the, and the hamstrings are antagonistic to the quadricep muscles. So because the quadricep muscles perform hip flexion, the hamstrings are automatically going to go on stretch. Okay. So, we know that this is already, from a biomechanical perspective, this is a stretch of the hamstring. Now, uh, a most um, extreme or the, uh, the muscle, the, the joints that with hip flexion and knee, uh, knee flexion, okay, we know that the joints have to be in hip flexion and complete knee extension for the hamstring to be on full stretch. We know that this is not a full stretch of the hamstring, but we do know that hip flexion and the extension is gonna put the hamstring on full stretch. Okay, so we know that this is not a full stretch, but it's enough of a stretch for this individual to be able to have an effective hamstring stretch for them because they're not very flexible. Now, what I've done uh, with this is that, as I said before, that the, the tape indicates the hamstring. Uh, there's purple, drawing or purple color to and this indicate this that the hamstring does stretch with knee extension and this is also black for uh the semitendinous semimembranous which we're uh relating this tape to so you can see as the knee goes into full extension you can see so let's do this for a second this is you know the hamstring is not on full stretch at all right in fact because the knee is in flexion it's less stretch than even here but you can see that it's very loose, right? It's not very taut at all. There's a lot of slack here, right? A lot of slack here on the hamstrings. This, this is much more slack. This is considered like semitendinosis, semimembranosis. Um, and the origin is the femur, right? So again, going back to how we learned before that, that the, the hamstring that attached to the femur, it has no motion or it has no relativity to motion at the hip. So I can move the hip back and forth and the semitendinosus and semimembranosus, because it does not cross the hip, it doesn't attach the initial tuberosity, it, attach, it originates on the femur, right? It's not going to be affected at all by hip motion, right? So I can, I can keep the knee in, in, in this degree and move the hip into complete flexion and move it down even into complete extension. 
And it's not going to have any bearing on this muscle, right? The muscle is going to stay let loose and slack the whole time. But if I were to extend the knee, you'll see that this muscle will start with this muscle here, uh, which is the indicate, indicated by the black, which is the semitendinous membranosis. Once I extend the knee, you'll see the black move, right? You see it move. And then now this muscle gets more taut, right? So if I were to pull this here, it's much more taut compared to now, right? Much more slack. So full knee extension is going to create a much uh, a better stretch on the hamstring uh, seminotendinosus and seminomembranosus. Now here, this is considered the biceps femoris. So again, and it does have relative, uh, it does change, right? And it does relate to hip motion because it attaches to, originates on the ischial tuberosity. So hip motion is going to affect that. It's gonna make, it's gonna make it much more taut. So here, it's much more slot, uh, slacked, right? Let's move here, much more slack here. As I move it up into more hip flexion, now I have a much more taut muscle. Now, if I were to move into knee extension, let's go hip, hip flexion, knee flexion, much more loose, less, uh, much more slack, right? less taut. Now I go knee extension. You'll even see the, the purple move, right? I mean, it goes from down at the bottom of the picture in the background to up to basically the shoulder of the individual in the background, right? So it does move from the bottom of the picture to the top of the shoulder. And it's much more taut, right? With full knee extension. So it goes from knee flexion, much more loose, much loo more loose to knee extension, much more taut now, right? So that movement compared to that movement. So moving on, right? We come back to this particular uh, individual who's not very flexible, right? So we went a little bit further knee flexion. So this is the starting point, 30 seconds, 30 more seconds. I move on to the last pass. 30 more seconds, and then that's it for that person. And then we switch and we stretch the other leg. Now, I can, okay, for this individual, like I said, I can start them here. Okay, I can start them here and move up a little bit more. So we can do that. So let me, So let, we can start lower. So let's say they're on the table and then I have a stool that I'm sitting on. I can start here and I can put my, I can put their uh, uh, heel on my shoulder. I can do that, right? So I'll start here and then I'll say, okay, uh, let me know uh, when to start uh, moving up or I'll hold it here. Let me know to stop. Okay, right there, 30 seconds. Let me know, this. I'll push it, let me know to stop, stop, 30 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna push up a little bit more, 30 more seconds. Let me know on the stop, stop. Okay, 30 more seconds. This is still hard for me, all right, as a, a, a practitioner ever, right? Now I have to move my, my arm. So my point is this motion, this, this type of stretching of the whole leg for someone who's not very flexible is not going to be very effective uh, uh, of a stretch for them for the most part. It's gonna be harder on me. So I say, get away from this stretch, right? Don't do this stretch. Now, um, the second aspect of this is we can go here, okay? So, for example, I go back to the, the patient who's not very flexible, um, and I can go into this position more, one, two, three. Uh, the second option I can do is I can begin to extend the knee, okay? So, we might get to the point to where this is a... This patient or this client, we get one, and then actually we can get all the way here, and it, and it really doesn't uh, affect their, doesn't make them feel uncomfortable with the stretch. 
we want the, the individual we're stretching to feel a little uncomfortable. Otherwise, it's not a stretch, right? We might as well just not stretch them. So this may get to the point where we go one, two, three, and they can get here and they're really not feeling it. Okay, so what we can do is we can begin to extend the knee. So we would start here. Okay, let me know the stop, stop. Okay, here's uh, the next uh, phase is, okay, I'm going to put, this is 30 seconds. I'm going to push up a little bit. So now I take my hand over their knee. I put my hand on the bottom of their, um, of their heel. Okay. And then now I begin to let's see if you can see that. Extend the knee. Okay. So now I'll go, okay, let me know when to stop, stop. I, I can use my shoulder, my bicep, my forearm. I can use, um, you know, a lot more. I have a lot more muscles to work with to push. Okay. Um, and so then I would go, okay, let me know when to stop, stop. 30 seconds. Let me know when to stop. Stop. This is my last 30 second pass. Okay. Most of the time, when they're not that flexible, they're basically going to um, not be able to get very high. Right. So that's okay. 30 seconds here. Let me know when to stop, stop. 30 seconds. Let me know, stop, stop. I mean, that's a very, most people are not that flexible. It's not a lot of movement. Okay, so we get to like here, but that's okay. This is still a good static type of stretch for uh, these individuals. Okay, so that's for someone who is not that flexible. The second person is someone who gets, we get to the point and we do this and we get to about right here. Okay, so we get to about right here. And this is a moderately, they're not very flexible, but they're more flexible than the first person. Um, and it's a moderate, they're moderately flexible. So they're flexible, they're not very flexible, but it's they're more flexible than than the other individual. So we start here, right? So I'll go, let me know, stop, stop. Say so that's where I stop. And then I'll I'll put my hand over their knee and I'll put my hand behind their underneath their heel. And I could even slide them, have them come off the table a little bit to the edge. And then what I can do is I can put. I can put my uh, their heel on my shoulder, okay? So I put my heel on their shoulder, and then I would, I could even, a lot of times I'll put my hand behind their calf, and then I put my other hand over their knee. Because if when we start going up, their knee's gonna wanna do this. And so we wanna keep their knee into full extension to get a full, uh, as more effective of a hamstring stretch as possible. Okay, so then I would go, okay, here, this is their first 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Okay, let me know when to stop. I want to push up a little bit more. And I can use my body, right? I can use my body and I can, I can actually walk them. I can walk them forward, right? As I walk forward, their legs going forward, right? So 30 seconds here. Okay, let me know when to stop. I walk forward. They say, they say stop. Then I hold another 30 seconds. Okay, I'm going to push a little bit more. I'm going to go a little bit more. Let me know when to stop. Stop. Okay, there's my last 30 second hold. And then I hold for 30 seconds. And then I repeat on the other leg. So that's individual who is moderately flexible. Um, and so, you know, we could use um, obviously our hand and our shoulder and our other hand to keep the knee straight as they go full, as we continue to move the leg into hip flexion and, and, and keep it in the extension. Now, the third person is someone who we, when we test their flexibility, we're, this is the individual where we go, we get up here and there's no, there's no tightness, we don't feel anything, where there's no resistance, we go, wow, right? You're really flexible. Okay, and so at that point, we say, okay, well, they're, they start to feel something about here. All right, well, that's, that's okay. So we'll start, this is our starting point. Okay, so that's their 30 seconds. Now I am not needing to use a lot of body parts, right? Shoulder, hand, wrist, all that, because they're not, there's nothing that's weighted on me, right? So 
I could just stand up next to them, right? I could stand up next to them and, and just hold the top of their foot, all right, with my hand. So I'd be on the top of their foot with my hand. And again, my hand's here on their knee. And then here's my 30 seconds. And then now all I'm doing is, okay, let me know when to stop. Okay, this is 30 seconds. Now I go to my next pass. Let me know when to stop, 30 seconds, stop. Okay, and then I hold it. And then now it's just gravity pulling their leg down, right? So it's not a lot of work for me. Then my last 30 seconds, let me know when to stop, stop. And then that's their last 30 second pass, okay? So that's the most flexible person. Or not most, that's almost the most flexible person. The, the most flexible person is somebody who basically, we'll, we'll, we start from here, we come all the way up, let me know to stop. And they're, they can, you know, get their leg to this point. Okay. And we know that, wow. Okay. That's what we said. Wow. You're really flexible. And at this point, this is like kind of the, we'll say the fourth stage from what I'm talking about today is that remember, you know, this is obviously the skeleton, but a, a real person will have muscle and uh, abdominal muscle. And then their, you know, their legs, their muscles of their quads and the muscles of their abdominal, they approximate. So they touch almost. Right. So it's like they can get their leg all the way to here. And it's like, basically, we don't need to stretch them, right? So we say, uh, okay, yeah, we, you don't need to be stretched. Your hamstrings are so flexible, right? So we get to that point where, we, you know, it's like, it's not, it's pointless. So we don't even stretch the hamstrings, okay, at all. Um, so, so that basically completes my demonstration of how to stretch the hamstring with three different types of individuals with different levels of flexibility.